My objective is a brief review of the benefits of the HIV diagnostic algorithm, uh, including uh, HIV RNA testing at the Florida Bureau of Public Health Laboratories in, in uh, both Jacksonville, Miami. Uh, a brief review also of the efforts to integrate the clinical management testing into a new uh, like single staging algorithm concept. A little bit about the background. Uh, we have uh, the, our public health laboratory system serves 67 uh, county health departments and many contracted community-based organizations within those uh, county health departments. Our HIV diagnostic testing is offered to providers who perform HIV 1-2 rapid pre-screening as well as those who do not pre-screen at point of care. You'll see in, in a few minutes that uh, most of our uh, acute cases that we're going to be talking about are still coming from those that may not be pre-screening uh, to a great extent. Uh, Florida's HIV rate in 2019 was 20.4 cases per 100,000, ranked third uh, in the U.S. Uh, our laboratory performs more than 90,000 uh, HIV-1-2 diagnostic tests, that's antigen antibody diagnostic tests, with approximately 2,500 confirmed HIV-1 positive cases per year. I've included a, a, a timeline of interest. Uh, we actually transitioned to the HIV-1-2 antigen antibody three test algorithm in April 2012, uh, even before the guidelines came out because we had the opportunity with contracts uh, to both switch our primary screening test as well as to move away from Western blot all at this same time period, and we went ahead and, and did so. Uh, later on th that year, uh, it, like July through December, with us being able to report uh, the acute uh, algorithm to find acute cases, uh, d differentiating from the established cases became uh, relatively uh, uh, fairly common, and our patient care and uh, STD programs wanted to get together and put a special emphasis on these these cases to link them to care as well as do uh, partner referrals as soon as possible. So we actually uh, implemented some additional reporting steps, other even in addition to our electronic lab reporting, and we'll talk about that in the next few slides. Uh, jump all the way to 2021, even during the middle of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we were able to uh, uh, do some replacement of some uh, long uh, in, in placed uh, algor assays in our algorithm. Uh, we replaced the HIV RNA, HIV-1 RNA qualitative assay was replaced with the HIV RNA quant DX uh, diagnostic assay, which allows that simultaneous diagnostic and quantitative RNA provided a plasma specimen is submitted. And then in October of last year, uh, we replaced our HIV-1 Sanger sequencing assay with an in-house verified target next generation sequencing procedure. So this is, uh, is the, our algorithm that we're most accustomed to seeing. And the only way I, I actually modified it a little bit to show that now we have not just uh, non-differentiating antigen antibody immunoassays, but now differentiating uh, HIV-1-2 one, one, antigen antibody assays. And of course, that can lead to maybe some easier ways to confirm HIV-2 cases or suspected HIV-2 cases, as well as uh, give you an idea if you will need RNA testing to maybe confirm an H, uh, P24 antigen uh, reactivity. Uh, down with the HIV RNA, as I think Bernie had a, a good uh, uh, coverage of this uh, yesterday, and that we now have more than just a qualitative and a quantitative uh, HIV-1 assay uh, for this third step in the algorithm. We now have the quant DX assay, and we have uh, MAT, uh, HIV-1, HIV-2 uh, simultaneous detection uh, in, in our RNA platform. 
Also, just as a reminder, when we I talk about algorithm-defined acute uh, infections, what I'm looking at is is the initial test being re repeatedly reactive, and then the supplemental test being on the far right as either HIV-1 negative or indeterminate, or HIV-2 negative indeterminate, and then reflex to RNA, and then it's the result on the left uh, being defined as the acute infection. So this actually led to um, a change in our requisition uh, soon after we started really identifying a substantial number of acute cases, relatively speaking. You'll see the numbers are not great, but they are enough to get the attention that, of uh, patient care that they want to uh, get these people linked as soon as possible. So before, um, we were always collecting uh, rapid test data on our requisitions, uh, even before uh, the new algorithm. However, with the uh, ability to differentiate and distinguish the acute from the established, uh, we now receive serum plasma that are marked as point of care reactive, which we, you know, typically would be, be performing confirmatory for that. But we're also getting those that are marked rapid test, non-reactive, possible acute. So we want to make sure that we uh, see that, we re, uh, run it through the entire algorithm uh, and to see uh, that we are, the rapid test is not missing an acute stage. And thanks to the, uh, the, the astute uh, counselors, and we'll show you some examples of that, that they're able to, uh, by marking these boxes, uh, they are able to confirm that they were actually working with somebody in the acute stage. So this is uh, our early focus on the algorithm identified acute uh, infections resulting in assessing the distribution of these pedigree cases. Each little red sunburst represents one algorithm defined acute case unless there's a number within it. <clears throat> excuse me, that indicates the cumulative numbers that they've seen. And if you look sort of across from one end of the state to the other, at the end of the state, we've seen we have 67 of our 216 algorithm-defined acute case are in the Miami-Dade area. Uh, so this, and then our central Florida area, you'll see like Orange County with 33 and uh, Hillsborough with 27, Pinellas with 20, 11, that these are two of the metropolitan areas and, and regions that uh, rank probably in the, easily in the top two, uh, I mean, the top 10 of the uh, HIV incidence cases for the U.S. Uh, so our acute cases is matching the incidence quite well. I will uh, mention on this, uh, our policy since 2012 is to notify the, the healthcare providers and the regional DIS and patient care staff on all of these acute cases in real time. This is in addition to the electronic lab reporting. So they'll actually get phone calls from the laboratory uh, with specifics on these acute cases before they receive the electronic lab order. Uh, this moves them to a higher <laughs> priority um, and for the linkage to care and partner referral. Uh, and the message that I, I had earlier on this slide where they would click on the requisition that it was uh, rapid negative and they suspect an acute case, they would send it to us. So as this uh, is indicates, 46 of the 216, about 20%, uh, were followed that guidelines. They sent us uh, specimens on point of care, rapid negatives, and they turned out to be acute cases. Uh, so this is, shows that the uh, uh, either the providers were very uh, in tune with the individuals that were maybe across the table from them or in the clinic and wanted to follow up to not miss the chance of identifying an acute case. Uh, we see about uh, this number reflects over the years that it's showing here, probably about 20 to 25 cases a year uh, that we see. And so it's not a a big ordeal for us to make these these extra reporting efforts to to uh, identify these people uh, and these patients. As for COVID impact, I wanted to share a little bit of that. Uh, we 
uh, in 2019 was one of our highest years of identifying acute cases. There was 49 cases identified. And, and then uh, in 2021, in the midst of, of COVID, uh, that dropped down to just 10 cases that we identified for that year. Clearly, uh, probably an indication of fewer individuals self-referring to clinics or uh, clinic restrictions. So this is what we refer to as the single staging algorithm. Um, yeah, besides, it says a focus on uh, uh, rapid art, and that's true uh, to get them into care as soon as possible. But there's more of a sort of logistic uh, objective to this as, all, as well. Uh, we wanted to reduce the number of blood draws and, even, and perhaps even clinic visits uh, between uh, the initial diagnosis and linkage to care. And we, uh, we consider specimens coming to our laboratory in basically three different uh, pathways. We get point of care pre-screen rapid preliminary positives as one path. We get those at-risk rapid negative specimens. And these two categories, we really recommend that they draw plasma preparation tubes because there's a good chance that they will be, uh, test out uh, reactive, and if they're not previously positive and not in care, we can provide the necessary uh, baseline testing to get to maybe save that step, that extra blood draw to get them into care. The third path is just an unknown serostatus, and based on the cost and other issues with these type of uh, vacutainers, we leave it open. We suggest PPTs. But of course, we would accept serum uh, separator tubes as well. Even though with the records that we have now, we still see a substantial number of requests that they're previously positive, they're in care, but they need proof of positivity. For whatever reason, if they're, uh, the proof is outside of the state, we'll sometimes get specimens for this proof of positivity. Here, we basically just accept a serum separator tube we do basic uh, confirmation serologies, and if we have to use an RNA test to help confirm the, the positivity, we do that as well because it has both a serum and a plasma claim for diagnostics. Uh, for a new case or a past positive, not in care or in art naive, uh, they go through our full not, uh, algorithm coming from that uh, preliminary positive point of care. Uh, the other two paths, they go directly to the full algorithm. And we have uh, one of two outcomes that will take it to our, our third step. If it's discordant between the antigen antibody and the supplemental test, of course, that would go to our RNA uh, third step. And in case of a plasma, we can confirm it as a, an acute case, but we can also give it a baseline viral load as well, which we haven't been able to do that until uh, earlier in 2021, around January, February 2021, when we brought the Quant DX in to replace our qual. For all those years prior, we could, we would report, as you can see, the acute infection status. However, we would have to just offer a viral load testing on another platform uh, that was just quantitative only, uh, but that would also include a redraw uh, for a plasma. Uh, the other uh, proposed what we want to add to this uh, platform, this concept, is concordant positive newly diagnosed art naive individuals. So if they send us a plasma and they do confirm positive serological step at the algorithm, uh, and if it is a plasma, we can bring it on to RNA testing, and we will, we will do that uh, and provide a baseline for those individuals as well. Uh, if it's a serum, of course, all we can do is report it as, uh, as we do prior to 2021 as a concordant positive, an, an established infection. And if they are newly diagnosed at that stage, we would recommend them send us a plasma and we provide the viral load uh, if they wish us to do so. The other part of our proposal is to incorporate our target next generation sequencing genotyping uh, if the plasma, now this does require plasma, so our, this is another reason we strongly push for plasma. 
And so we can do that genotype for clinical purposes as well as surveillance purposes. Uh, but that plasma, if it's greater than 2,000 copies, we would, uh, in the RNA, we would reflect that to our next-gen sequencing. Um, with that, the only thing I, I wanted to go back, because we did talk about, you would think it, uh, this would be hard to get people to adhere to that uh, centrifugation of either uh, the plasma preparation tubes within four to six hours. But because most of our providers, at least those that deal with clinical management or combined diagnostic and clinical management, have been doing that for so many years for our, because we've been doing viral load testing since the mid-90s, that the, this is not as uh, much of a barrier as the actual use of anything other than a PPT. Our providers really like to use PPTs and SSTs. They do not like to uh, use traditional EDTAs uh, to, uh, to spin, pour off uh, the plasma into a sterile tube and then send it to us. So we try to, uh, this actually is working to our favor uh, uh, as well. So with that, I think I just have an acknowledgement slide next. Yes, uh, so I wanted to acknowledge uh, my colleagues here at the lab and uh, recommend uh, a couple of resources. Uh, the most recent out of APHL is a, a uh, fact sheet basically of, uh, on the use of interpretations of quantitative HIV viral, uh, HIV-1 RNA test results, uh, guidance for laboratories, and our um, document on suggested reporting language, uh, the January 19 issue.